let's start off with where you have. But first, as you would imagine, uh, if you remember some things from previous classes, as you go down the periodic table, you increase in radii. That's because you're adding orbits. The principal quantum numbers get larger. Uh, things are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, uh, as you put on those electrons, and so your increase is in radii. That's true for the transition metals, sort of. So the transition metals, if I kind of do a mini periodic table here. Okay, there's a bunch of them. There's three rows. There's the row one, row two, and row three. And there's a bunch of periodic, uh, there's a bunch of elements. It turns out that this is the smallest row. However, and you would think that the second row is larger and the third row is even larger. However, that's kind of true. A larger or largest, however, uh, the second and third row happen to be the same size. And the reason for that is something called lanthanide contraction. What that is, is that once you're starting to get to the third row of the periodic table, you add what's called the f electrons, or the f orbitals, which are electrons in that orbitals. Um, those electrons, or orbitals, are the worst at screening. And so s is actually the best. Um, so the worst at screening or shielding. Because of that, um, they don't block the outermost electrons from the internal electrons. And because they don't feel any extra charge, uh, then the third row of the transition metals turns out to be the same radii as the second. Again, that's because the F electrons in the third row are bad at screening. Normally, as we add new electrons, they're good at screening. You get more electrons. They don't see the center nucleus. so. Uh, they stray further from it. However, since these are bad at screening, these electrons see the nucleus as if they're in the second row. Because of that, there's what's called a contraction of the lanthanides. As you go across, relatively, as you go across a row from right to left, relatively, we have about the same size. So it's kind of a U. So. Uh, if radii is here, increases this way. As you go across, it kind of makes a little bit of a U like this. So actually, the atoms in the center of the transition metals will have a uh, smaller radius than the one on the edges. The most important part is that the second and third row have the same radius as the first. Next concept is electron oops, tron configs. Uh, and oxidation state. All right, this is stuff that we've seen pretty much already. You just want to get good at doing it again. Uh, be able to write down the electron configuration, be able to write down the oxidation states. So let's just do a couple examples so you can see this. Let's say we have chromium neutral. Well, that would be argon 4s2. Uh, 3D4. I'm going to come back to that one in just a second. Uh, it has a little exception we're going to talk about. Let's try uh, scandium. That would be argon 4S2 3D1. Let's try another one. Let's try nickel. It would be argon 4S2 uh, 3D uh, eight, and let's try copper. That'd be argon, four, S, two, three, D, nine. All right, two of these, I'm going to uh, illustrate a little exception here. So first, let me say a couple things. You don't have to write argon, because we all know, or whatever it would be. You usually, you just see people writing these, OK? Second thing, uh, if you are in the fourth column, or ninth column in the 
periodic table, you'll find something interesting. Now, instead of doing it for S2, or whatever the anion value is, S2, D4, this is going to change to 4S1, 3D5. And for the ninth column, similar thing will happen, 4S1, 3D10. That exception is, again, going to happen in the fourth and the ninth column, so the chromium column and the copper column, where it would prefer to have only one electron in the S state. Uh, that is easier to explain here with the chromium, where if it does that, none of the electrons are paired. So those energy levels are pretty similar, sometimes the S beam higher. Uh, and so we prefer that here, kind of in a similar way. We don't, it prefers to pair in the D as a lower energy than to be paired in the S. So know those exceptions for those columns. Other exceptions we won't talk about. Um, the other thing is, when these start to lose electrons, then uh, those electrons uh, the electrons that get lost are from the S orbitals. Let me show you what I mean. Let's do scandium uh, 2 plus. Well, that would just be 3D1. It will lose that 4S2. Or let's try nickel 2 plus. That would be 3D8. It loses the two S electrons first. Those tend to want to come off first. Uh, and so on. Copper 2 plus. Uh, would be 3D9. Okay, so be familiar writing these electron configurations. Be familiar coming up with the oxidation state um, of any given metal. And we've done practices of those before, so I won't do them again.